I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management, and welcome to our Women in Wealth series. Today, we're going to talk about distributions of employer stock from 401k plans. If you participate in an employer-sponsored retirement plan and decide to change jobs or retire, you could be faced with some important decisions. While many choose to roll over their plan balance to an individual retirement account, also known as an IRA, if you have company stock in your plan, you could forfeit a significant tax advantage, which is called net unrealized appreciation or NUA for short. Um, and you could um, forfeit that by rolling over the stock. Net unrealized appreciation is the difference between the original cost and the current fair market value of the employer stock while held in the qualified retirement plan. When a plan participant receives a lump sum distribution that includes employer stock, special federal tax uh, rules allow participants uh, to defer paying federal taxes on that net unrealized appreciation. So let's talk about a tax saving strategy. If you receive greatly appreciated employer securities as part of a lump sum distribution payment of your entire retirement plan assets within a single tax year, you should carefully consider whether or not to roll over these securities into an IRA. All distributions from IRAs are taxed as ordinary income, not as capital gain. That can be a big disparity in your tax bill. Therefore, if employer securities are rolled into an IRA, any potential for long-term capital gains treatment on the NUA and subsequent appreciation is lost. So if you elect a partial rollover instead, with only the portion of the lump sum not consisting of the employer stock being rolled over, there is no current tax on, on the rolled over portion. However, there is a tax at ordinary income tax rates on the value of the stock when it was obtained by the plan. In, the, in other words, the cost basis. And if you are under age 59 and a half, you may be subject to a 10% penalty on the cost basis of the stock. So do be careful about that as well. How is the stock taxed? The cost basis of the stock is taxable when distributed. <clears throat> Any net unrealized appreciation attributable to employer stock is not taxed until you sell the stock. Additionally, when the stock is sold, the net unrealized appreciation as of the date of the lump sum distribution is taxed at the long-term capital gain rate rather than as ordinary income, which may entitle you to a much more favorable tax rate uh, on that sum. Any additional appreciation that accumulates after the date of the lump sum distribution must be held for at least a year to be given a long-term capital gains treatment. The difference in the two tax rates can be substantial, particularly if you are the highest tax bracket of nearly 37% for this tax year. Now let's talk about the benefits of net unrealized appreciation. One of the key benefits of receiving employer securities from a qualified plan is that the NUA portion will be taxed at the applicable capital gains tax rates. Assume an investor, age 62, receives a share of XYZ corporation stock, that's their company stock, from his or her uh, employer's qualified retirement plan. And the stock is currently trading at $100 a share. The employer's qualified retirement plan trustee's cost basis of the stock is $15. The $85 difference represents the NUA. Only the $15 is subject to taxation at the ordinary income tax rates in the year of distribution. The $85 NUA will not be taxed until the year that the stock is sold and may be taxed at a lower capital gains tax rate if the shares have been held for at least one year. So some final considerations. Because there may be significant income tax advantages when you take employer securities from an employer qualified plan, you should consider whether taking a portion of the employer shares in kind from the plan is the right strategy for you. The number of in-kind shares of employer stock ultimately taken will depend largely on a number of tax and investment decisions. So it's important to work with your tax advisor and your financial advisor to determine which strategy to employ 
as owning too much of a single investment could expose you to a significant investment risk. Um, and employer stock is also subject to the same risks as any other stock. Um, the stock could be worth more, but could also be worth less than its original cost at the time it's sold. By holding company stock as opposed to selling it, an investor assumes the risk of any other shareholder. In addition to that, some investors, as a result of the employer stock purchase programs, may have a significant percentage of their assets in company stock. And I've seen that a lot. Selling a portion of the um, employer stock may allow you to diversify your portfolio. Now, of course, you want to speak with your tax advisor and your financial advisor to review what percentage of your holdings is in employer stock and ensure that your portfolio aligns with your goals, your time frame, and appetite for risk. There are advantages and disadvantages to an IRA rollover depending on your investment options, services, fees, expenses, withdrawal options, required minimum distributions, tax treatment, and the investor's unique financial needs and goals. So please be aware that rolling over retirement assets into one IRA account could potentially increase fees as the underlying fees you know, may be subject to sales loads, uh, higher management fees, 12B1 fees, or IRA account fees such as custodial fees. Um, so just things to be aware of with every decision that you make, you have to look at all sides of it. For assistance in determining uh, if a rollover to an IRA is appropriate for you, just sit down with your financial advisor and develop a strategy that's most appropriate for your financial needs and your goals. A couple key points. Uh, if any part of your 401k plan is invested in employer stock, make sure you understand the tax implications of either rolling over or taking a lump sum distribution from your 401k when you change jobs or retire. Make sure you tell beneficiaries that the NUA tax break may apply to them. Note that the potential NUA tax break is void if your entire interest in this plan or potentially other employer plans is not distributed in the same calendar year. Our call to action today is to determine if your 401k uh, holds appreciated company stock. If it does, sit down and speak with your financial advisor to develop a strategy uh, for how to handle your appreciated employer stock from your retirement plan. Thank you again for joining me today. Again, I'm Regina McCann Hess, uh, president of Forge Wealth Management. <clears throat> you can find me at uh, forgewealth.com and on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and YouTube at Forge Wealth and on LinkedIn, Regina McCann Hess. Go make it a great day. Thank you.